transaction between the seller, the fish, and the buyer. Product liability with dealing with food and seafood. Do you guys have any of that? No, no. Oh. You know, I think this is a good idea, but um, I do worry about the part of liability issue because, you know, you, you can have live stream, but you're only relying on what the fisherman says, right? I caught this fish, you know, I could say, me and my brother went down to South Point, we caught 20 minbachi last night, and we're selling it now at 7 o'clock in the morning, right? So what if they caught it, you know, two nights ago, they put it in the cooler, and they're only selling it now? It, it could really just, just be a gear right? Yeah, good question. So in version two of our app, we do have plans to implement uh, blockchain technology. There is a technology that was developed by uh, Draper Industries, uh, which is pretty much a tag that a fisherman will be able to place on some part of the fish that will automatically log the location, the time, and the fisherman will be able to upload the, the length and the weight. And then also with the, with, with the, the business model that we have, we're, we're banking on the fishermen competing with each other and also the consumers being able to regulate the, the, the suppliers as well. So if we see somebody cheating, no one's gonna buy from them. Like an eBay person. Straight into that, for sure. Yeah. I think this is a great idea because I have the hardest time trying to find fresh fish. Because by the time I get to Suisun, they're all sold out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Suisun, you're paying a premium price for it. Yeah, too. And you don't even know the pocket fish. Yep. I saw your financial plan with a very high projection. What kind of model do you use for projecting that much profits? So um, the financials, the, yeah. the, the number of fishermen, the number of fishermen subscribers is based on us taking less than one percent of the, the fishermen that's out there. And then we're, we're charging them a, on average a $10 a month subscription fee. Okay. Um, and they'll get a deal if their, their subscriptions are longer. And also what um, we're gonna start as, as we get more users in the app, um, we, we're gonna implement an affiliate sales um, program with Bass Pro Shop. I think they're the highest right now. They give like up to 8% um, for pay-per-clicks um, on the app. Mm -hmm. But over time, you should have some kind of marginal diminishing production. So, yeah, what we've been hearing from a lot of people is that our numbers are really low. And so for us to take less than 1% of the market and know that there's that much more fishermen that will be able to use it, we're actually projecting really low numbers. Thank you. You see competition going in between or setting up so that I own a restaurant and I want to have a group of commercial, you know, people that I can work with as well. So guys that are bigger, I'm going to be buying more fish than you could just be eating somebody for two or three pounds. You we're, know, we're not we're not replacing the fishermen's um, uh, traditional revenue. Um, mm -hmm. If if they see that they can only sell one fish at a time and then see it grow on the app, then they can start phasing the the markets and the restaurants out. But we still want to service restaurants. But uh, I can see communicating instead of my one guy. We were talking about one of the few guys that text a thousand people a week. But I can see being kind of a no on, okay, who's catching on the other right now today? Because I need to pick up 40 pounds, you know, for my, for, you know, sometime in the next 24 hours, I need to pick up 40 pounds to get me through the next day. You know, kind of on a regular basis. But I can see the ability to communication tool for that as well. And so what's happening right now is, they're coming into the boat, get the phone call, and everybody starts making phone calls and texting what they got, and this is like managing all this stuff. And you know, you can see what I'm saying. So I just see there's a real opportunity. There's a high, there's, I would say there's a low level of trust in certain um, fish houses in, in, in the state. And you know, I'm not thinking it's Narlin, and that's you get Broadville, but that's not the fish I want to see when I go to get some tacos somewhere. It's kind of like, oh, they got Marlin. So, you know, being able to kind of be in that loop and understand, and also manage the price a little bit more, because, you know, we're seeing 13, 16, 18. A lot of restaurants can't afford that. And that's the best place for that upcharge, is in the restaurant, you see what I'm saying? 
for the on-premise versus the off-premise. So anyway, I just see that there's some other leverage you guys can put in there and, and make it make it work in communication. Along those same lines, one of the other hopes is to start creating a market for the lesser known fish. Yeah. It'll take the strain off of Absolutely. Yeah. Of Absolutely. Yeah. Teaching people that that's a good fish to eat. Yeah. So my question is, um, in your market slide, you're saying that um, recreational fishermen have seven to thirteen million dollars in sales. Yeah. Do they know where the recreational fishermen are selling their fish? Uh, the only information that was cited in Hawaiian Business Magazine's article was that the fish were being either sold off on the highways, on the side of highways, or fishermen were delivering their catch directly to the consumer. And then what are your backgrounds? We both teach high school. Hey, what's up? Okay. <laughs> We both, we both graduated from Berkeley and we're both educated now. One of the big things for us is um, we're, we're trying to see a lot more people that look like us in industries like tech. Um, so besides what uh, Matt does, he also started a nonprofit for uh, to get Polynesians interested in robotics. Oh, wow. And, right on. and I, I helped develop a STEAM curriculum for Kamehameha schools. STEM curriculum, yeah. And if two teachers is uh, a red flag for anyone <laughs> uh, starting a tech app seafood business, it is in our plans to uh, hire or bring aboard as a partner, a chief operating officer, uh, somebody who is an expertise in the fishing industry. So we're currently vetting a couple individuals uh, to fill that position for our company. All right. Another round of applause.